Some wars are caused because different factions want different things. However, in this conflict, years of war were caused by two factions who wanted the same thing. The Koopa Throne. This decades-long conflict of battles, slaughter, and betrayal became known in the Koopa Kingdom as the Wars of Frozen Flames. Good morning, gentlemen. Shall we begin? I think it'd be better if the king started this meeting, don't you? Lord Richard could start the meeting when he wants! Calm yourself, Lord Tusk. My apologies, Lord Blaine. Your grace? Oh, for God's sake! This again? Does he always do this? John! I had me! <gasps> oh. Did you sleep well, your grace? Yeah, I guess. Forgive my husband, he's had trouble sleeping since Womp City. Good for him! My son died on the battlefield thanks to you! You've got brothers to pass your measly holdings to, I think you'll be fine. That was my only son! My wife won't even come near me the rest of the time! You think you're the only one who's lost men, Lord Python? Our father was slain, as well as three of our brothers! There were too many Blackfoots lurking around anyway! What makes you think you're the only ones with lost men? Two of my boys were cut down by your savage brothers. My father lost his head! We all lost men at the battle. Let's not make this about ourselves. The king is safe, and those who've wronged the realm are now gone. That's what's important. Yeah, Lord Richard's right. Thank you, your grace. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate the king and queen on the birth of their daughter, Princess Cindy. <laughs> Lord Richard's become quite the suck-up since the battle. What did you say? Thank you, Lord Richard. She's wonderful. Yeah, she's the perfect addition to our family. What does the child look like? I don't know, a baby? Interested in the appearance of a newborn child? That's quite frightening, Lord Waldron. You know what I meant, Lord Blackfoot. She has brown eyes, red hair, and quite the large nose for a girl. Interesting. The more important discussion at hand would be who shall the princess marry? Once she comes of age, of course, we're not all like Lord Waldron here. That's not what I meant! Well, my grandson is of a similar age! I'm sure he'd be honored to take the hand of Princess Cindy! Your grandson? How would that benefit the throne? Well, you'd have our utmost support? Do we not already have your utmost support, Lord Silver? Well, um, uh... We're not wasting a royal princess on your house, Lord Silver. We'd be much wiser finding a foreign prince for her to wed. Perhaps marrying the princess to the Bonencrout King would resolve tensions with them for good. The Bonencrout Kingdom? We spent years fighting them! I still have the skull of the Duke of Apfelbon high up in my hall! My father and brother didn't die fighting for our kingdom just so you could give their rotten, ill-bred heir a wife. That was then, this is now. They'd make a much better ally than enemy going forward. Sir Roderick's correct. We'd be better off keeping the peace. We've enough going on right now as it is. We'll think about it. What else is there to discuss? Your Excellency, anything going on with the church? Uh, what the, huh? Seriously? This guy too? Lord Richard was asking about the church, Your Holiness. Well, the Bishop of Cooper Cross has recently passed away, so the post has opened up. Aw, uh, poor guy. I hope he wasn't in pain. I hear he was allegedly thrown from a window by the husband of one of his lovers. I can't believe a man of the church doing something like that! Absolutely disgraceful! I know, right? At least murder him in the courtyard. My nephew Garrett would be honored to accept this post. Your nephew? He's not even a priest! He's read the Bible! He's had it read to him, at least. Our youngest brother Grodus would be a much more suitable candidate. He just recently turned 20 and already knows the history and theology. And what gives you a right to choose the bishops of the realm, Lord Beerwick? Lord Garner should choose. He's the Lord of Cooper Cross. 
Lord Garnet shall remain in the Black Tower until further notice. Until then, we would be better off appointing people based on skill. Seriously? I have had just about enough of you granting all these offices to these treacherous snakes! Something to say, Sandaling. You've made Lord Berwick the captain of Karhar City, Sir Manfred commander of the Royal Fleet, Sir Torrance the master of ceremonies! Sit down or your ass isn't getting invited to the next one! The Sanderling's right. You're just filling the kingdom with your allies. Explains why you brought these limptic lords all the way from Sherbetland to fight your political battles for you. You take that back! Lord Richard's fighting to make the realm a better place for everyone, and you're all holding us back! Lord Blackfoot's right. I see no reason for any of these traitors to be here. You're the traitors! We're simply fighting for what's best for the realm. You consider the deaths of thousands of men what's best for the realm now, do you? I consider the deaths of certain individuals to be best for the realm. Spare us the bullcrap. You're just trying to use a king to grow your family's power. If Lord Richard had been given his rightful place at the king's side for the beginning, none of this would have happened! Lord Richard's rightful place is at the end of my sword. Lord Richard is a wonderful man! Enough! Enough arguing! We do not want another battle! We're supposed to be at peace right now! They started it! I don't care who started it! No more fighting! Ugh. As you wish, your grace. The speeding is over. Everyone out! Lord Blaine. Lord Richard. I've wished to speak to you for some time now. I just wanted to inform you I apologize that things ended the way they did for your father. I never wanted it to come to that. My father was slain treacherously. Executed without trial. Don't think I'll ever forget that. <sighs> And then one of the king's half-brothers came at me, and Hal comes in at the last minute to save my ass! Wow, did any of you die? I can't believe I missed that! Perhaps if you focused on your training, you'd be battle-ready by then. Hey, I'm good with the sword! Those guys are lucky I wasn't there. If I was, their soldiers would have been in serious danger! Well, it was nice to see those skills on display when you were captured. Sounds like you boys had to deal with quite the battle. We did. Believe me, it wasn't as pleasant as it sounds. You're always so modest, Hal. You fought bravely. You should be proud of yourself. It's not that simple, my lady. We may have won the battle, but we started the war. And we finished it, too. Our father's the King's Claw. Lord Sigmund's dead. I can't imagine his sons are all too happy with that. Hal's right. There's no way we'll ever be safe in the valley now. Are you alright, Rickon? Yeah, you've seemed kind of on edge since the battle. I'm fine. Thank you, my lady. I figured you'd be glad to be back. You were the one complaining about having to go to the valley in the first place. I'm fine, brother, honestly. But it's that python girl he likes. Ooh, Rickon's in love. <sighs> I suppose we did become somewhat close. Aw, maybe I picked the wrong brother. Don't push your luck, you. Don't worry, brother. I'm sure once time passes, we'll all be able to return to the valley together. Thanks, everyone. I can't believe he's really gone! Sir Edric was as good a knight as any of us, my lady. Next time we meet on the battlefield, I promise you, I'll avenge him. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Henry. No problem. Say, perhaps a trip to my father's castle will take your mind off things. Oh. <laughs> hey, I saw her first! Rose. Oh. Hello, Mother. What are you doing up here? Why aren't you in the courtyard looking for a husband like your sister? Don't really feel like it. Rosanna, my dear. This past year you spent more time up here and in the library than you have anywhere else. How do you ever expect to make any friends if you don't talk to anyone? I had friends in the valley. <sighs> Your father warned me about a phoenix girl you were talking to. We really hit it off. There are plenty of ladies here at Twinsy Tropics. I don't really get along with any of them. They're all so vain and spoiled. They're your kin, Rose. Why not befriend one of your Uncle Manfred's girls? They're all way older than me. They treat me like a child. What's wrong with your Uncle Jefford's daughters, Ava and Bibi? Bibi's rotten to the core, and Ava can't even read. Can't I just go back to the valley? You think you'll be welcome there after the battle? They'd make a hostage out of you in no time. 
Ugh, this is all father's fault. Your father's doing what he can to make the realm better for everyone. Perhaps if you were grateful, you'd be mindful of that. I'm sorry. I just miss Jane. I understand, my daughter, but this Jane girl cannot be trusted. Her uncle was a traitor to the realm, as is she. But she was my friend! We'll find you some new friends. Better friends. Friends that actually align with your family's allegiance. <sighs> Alright. Now come. We're heading downstairs. You've got the nicest water garden in the kingdom, and you never use it. Well, everyone! I am proud to announce that our great king, His Grace John Kuma the Sixth, has appointed yours truly as Groom of the Stool. Groom of the Stool? Is that not the person who cleans the king's ass? It's one of the most prestigious positions of the realm. That's what matters. Well done, brother. I cannot think of anyone more worthy of the position. Thank you, Sir Venice. No problem. I cannot think of anyone who served the king more than yourself. Ah, yes. Congratulations, father. Thank you, son! Though mayhaps I should be congratulating you, Earl Heron! The wealth that comes with the title certainly doesn't hurt. I've gotten knighted by Lord Russet. It is unwise to brag about your achievements, number three! How's little Cordray doing? Very well, thank you, mother. Wonderful to hear! I'm sure he'll make a great lord someday! Just like his grandfather! <sighs> Are you alright, my love? Yeah. <laughs> hey, which we expect a son from you, Corin? <laughs> yeah, having some trouble in the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> Wanna knock it off? That's enough, Corin! I'm sure your cousins meant no harm! Wise words, brother! How does one get with a child at such a young age, anyway? Excuse me? How old were you when you had him? Thirteen? Fourteen, actually. What was a girl doing fooling around like that at such a young age? It was an accident! It was very late, and Sir Edric and I were both really drunk. How are you even sure the child was his? Why don't we talk about how old you were when you had your first kid, my lady? That's enough of that! I will not have this talk in my hall! Completely agree! Incredibly inappropriate behavior! Great moderation, brother! <laughs> I haven't had this much fun at dinner in years! Hey, Jane, perhaps if it doesn't work out with Corin, you know where to find me! <sighs> Jane, wait! <laughs> it's like I always say, women are the rails on which men run! Not now, Bennis! Lady, there's someone here to see you. <gasps> Father! Anna, it's been much too long. How have you been? I've had better days. I understand, given the circumstances. I'll make sure Lady Anna remains safe and sound, my lord. Thank you, Sir Devon. At least now you have this place all to yourself. To be honest, it's kind of gloomy. I only really like it out here in the garden. If you're looking for a new husband, I'm only one letter away. Please leave us in peace, Sir Hakon. Understood, my lord. Does this castle happen to have a wine cellar? It's the room at the end of the third floor. Sweet, thanks. I'm so sorry about this, Angel. Had I known Lord Garnet would betray you in such a way, I'd have never sent you here. It's alright, Father. The marriage has been a lot better recently. He's been imprisoned in the Black Tower for six months now. That certainly helped. Don't worry, my daughter. As soon as the realm is at peace, I'll get you an annulment. It's alright, Father. I'm happy here. Excuse me? You can't possibly be happy like this. How could you possibly want to stay with him after what he did? <clears throat> I assume that's not your supper for this evening. It's Gerald's. It could only be his. My lord, a grandchild of my own. <clears throat> I mean, congratulations, my daughter. But it's what needs to be done. You can't possibly stay with him. If you annul our marriage, I'll be sent back to Sherbertland and I'll never see my child again. You know that's what would happen. <sighs> I wish I could tell you otherwise. I must stay. I'll be fine here, I promise. Besides, Sir Devon will protect me. Alright, if that's what you truly want, you're free to stay. Thank you, Father. It's alright, you needn't worry. So long as I'm in charge, Lord Garnet will remain safely locked away in the Black Tower. I hope the Queen at least treated you well during your captivity. She did. She was very kind. I see. 
How are things going, Your Excellence? The young Koopling's very attentive. He's proud of my early student who's not fallen asleep on me yet. That's wonderful to hear. Reminds me quite a bit of yourself at that age. And your brother, Ed, of course. Hey, what about me? You were... okay. Daddy! Huh? I still say he should have been named Arwen, after our father. Jane wished to name him James. We've no right to deny her. I'd have called him Richard. Imagine the Queen's reaction. Hello? You're the king, your grace. You don't need to knock. Hey, brothers. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, your grace. You still down for that hunting trip this afternoon? You bet. Just don't kill anything in front of me. You know I don't like blood. What about the council meeting, your grace? Oh my god, is that my nephew? <sighs> yep, he's growing up fast. He certainly is. Perhaps we should introduce him to my boy, Godwin. Open wide. <laughs> yep, I'm sure they'll grow up to become best friends. That is the hope, your grace. Could I have a private word with my brother, you guys? As you wish, your grace. Perhaps there's some ladies in the courtyard that need attending to. Are you guys supposed to take vows against that? Foes only apply if you're in a church. Where does it say that? I don't know. Somewhere. So how are you holding up? You know, after the battle? Quite alright. Thank you, your grace. Took a few jabs to the chest, I suppose. Like that'd be enough to stop you. You're a better sword fighter than I could ever hope to be. <laughs> Thank you, your grace. So, you excited to go shoot some arrows in the woods this afternoon? I warn ya, I'm getting pretty good! Yeah... I suppose I'll take my mind off things. Something wrong, Roderick? It's fine, your grace. I may be the king, but we're still brothers. If something's bothering you, you can tell me! I suppose I've just been missing Jane since she left to go live with Corin. Oh, I'm sorry about that, man. I'm sure she's doing well with Corin, though. His father is one of my most loyal advisors. It's alright, your grace. The old castle's just not the same without her. I wish she could be around James every day and watch him grow up with the rest of us. Yeah, I felt the same way when they took me away from Mother. I must have cried for hours. She talked about you all the time. She always thought you were going to be a great king. So did I, before all this happened. Your Grace, a moment, please. Very well. Take the children outside. Godwin loves to watch sword fights. Is that really appropriate for a two-year-old? I mean, yes, Your Grace. The children seem well. They do. When Godwin was born, I'd pray he'd be okay. I couldn't bear to lose any more children. Any more? Our first son, Edric. He only lived three days. Then the world took him away from me. Hedrick, I'm so sorry, my queen. It was so long ago now. John's never been as fond of another child. You should have seen his face when he saw him. Losing a child is never easy. Talissa and I have lost our fair share of children ourselves. You have? Of course. We lost two sons before Robert came along. Talissa was completely heartbroken. Please, send her my condolences. No mother should have to bury her child. What was it that you wished to address with me, Lord Richard? We need not be enemies, Your Grace. We should be working together, not fighting amongst ourselves. Indeed. We should be doing that. I agree. That's why I'd like to take Prince Godwin with me to Sherbetland, once he comes of age. Excuse me? There we'll set up a council of his own, where he'll learn to rule for himself, as his father never did, and be married to our youngest daughter, Ursula. So that's your solution? To take my son away from me? All the way to Sherbert Land where I'll never see him again! You'll be able to visit. How can I ever trust him in your hands after what you did to Lord Sigmund? That's ridiculous. Lord Sigmund was a traitor to the realm. I'd never harm a child, much less a prince. You keep your offer, Lord Richard. I am not handing my children over to your clutches. You're being completely absurd right now. Is there a problem here? Lord Richard was just leaving. So be it. What was that all about? Don't worry about it. Lord Richard was trying to get me to hand my son over to him. I've no doubt he wishes to kill him and take the throne for himself. Shall we inform the king? 
That won't work. He's been frightened of Lord Richard ever since the battle. He'll only take his side. I don't understand how someone with so much power will never use any of it. The valley's filled with Lord Richard's supporters now. We need to convince the king to move the court to Cayenne Crag, where we'll have more support. How the hell are we supposed to do that? Who else is going to join us? Sir Theodric? We'll need to gather allies, people who listen to us. Luckily, I know just the person. I'm only going to ask this once. Which one of you got dirt on my shield? Aw, oh, crap. Perfect. Well done, Eric. That was quite the display of power there. The hell do you want? Just a talk. Why the hell would I want to talk to you? You're the reason we lost the Bonnet Drop War in the first place! You want what you say in front of the Queen, Sir Eric. Why don't you make me? And it's Lord Eric now! Calm yourself, Blaine. I can handle this myself. Your father fought bravely for the king at Womp City. Your family has our utmost condolences. My father was the best there was! Lord Richard is going to pay for his murder! And that's full rubber, too! Sounds like you are thirsty for vengeance, it seems. I'll slay every man, woman, and child with even a drop of sherbet blood, and then I'll burn their castle to the ground! Whoa, calm down, Sir Eric. It's Lord Eric now! Lord or not, you're not the only one seeking vengeance for your father. Blaine's right. We all want the same thing. If we simply work together, Lord Richard's head will be yours. Interested? What's the plan? Gather your best men. We'll depart for Cayenne Crag tomorrow. Lord Richard's not the only one with friends in high places. Yes! Excellent shot, your majesty! Maybe next time you could actually try and hit the target for a change. Sure! <laughs> ah! Oops, sorry, Birch. Watch where you're shooting! Nice <laughs> dodging, Birch the ball! Hey, knock it off! It sure is nice to get out of the castle for a change. Things have certainly been uneasy there. I've noticed that too. The courtyard looked awfully empty this morning. Perhaps things would be different had you actually done anything to help during the battle. My father always says, patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Sounds like smart advice. It's a shame the queen couldn't make it to the hunt. She does have two children to take care of now, brother. I'm sure his grace is happy he finally has a daughter. Assuming she is his, after all. Hey, watch what you say about the queen! I'm sorry, Sir Theodric. I only meant to make a joke. I don't see anyone laughing, do you? It's fine, Sir Aaron. I know you meant well. Uh, perhaps go check if anyone's caught anything interesting yet? Thanks, Sir Roderick. What was that all about? Oh, nothing. It's not important. If it concerns the legitimacy of the Queen's children, it is. What's going on with you? <sighs> I may or may not have shared a bed with the Queen myself. This had better not be another one of your jokes, because I'm not laughing. It's not. It was after John collapsed at the feast. She was feeling lonely and she just said the right things. Do you know what you've done? He needed company. You and I know him better than anyone. No one's never bothered with her. She told me they only sleep in the same bed once a month. And what about Blaine then? Where does he come into this? He only went to Blaine because she needed an heir. He's John's closest cousin. There's no love between them. She told me herself. So the children are his then? Assuming they're not mine. <laughs> it's not funny, brother. Those children are the future of the Koopa line. The peace of the kingdom depended on their legitimacy. Cinder's a kind and gentle woman. She deserves a real man who will show her the love she deserves. The king is our brother. He could have easily just ignored us as most kings would have, but he's always treated us with the utmost respect. And this is how you repay him? 
Why? And you're so above taking a brother's lover. I've seen the way you look at Jane. Jane is our sister-in-law. You leave her out of this. Don't deny it. You've wanted her ever since we were kids. When she was married off the edge, you were a wreck. You spent the entire year down at the tavern and nearly got in a fight with him at the wedding. They were too young to be married. I was trying to warn him, but he wouldn't listen. You were jealous. You always were. You just wanted her for yourself. <sighs> What's going on here? <sighs> Nothing, Sir Heron. What's up? I just wanted to let you know we found a boar in the forest. It kind of looks like Lord Blackfoot. We'll be right there, Sir Heron. I'll let the others know. Do come quick, we've been chasing it for hours. Speak no word of this. To anyone. Mm. Yes, brother. Afternoon, gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Seems like quite the small ensemble. Where's everyone else? I decided I could only trust a small group in discussing this matter. What about the king? Should he be involved? That's on one of his hunting parties, I assume. There's a hunting party going on right now?! So what might this be about, Lord Richard? You all fought alongside me in the Battle of Warm City. For that, you have my undying respect. <laughs> you're too kind, Lord Richard. Save your tears for stubbing your toe, Lord Tusk. F*** you! And as my most trusted friends, I seek your advice. We are at war with the Queen and her men, and should she raise an army, we'll need more. We lost more of our men in the battle. You don't say, Lord Waldron. I'm just saying, we hardly had the number to stand up against the royal army a second time. We hold Lord Garnet as a prisoner, and he commands a respectable army. Perhaps we could bargain with him to switch sides. That man made a prisoner out of my daughter and handed her over to the Queen. He's lucky I didn't take his head with Lord Sigmund's. Allies are allies, my lord. He is not to be trusted. He's to remain in the Black Tower unless I say otherwise. You four unmarried sons. I hardly see how that's relevant, Lord Berwick. It's entirely relevant. Marriages create alliances, and your sons are members of the Royal Cooper bloodline, direct descendants of King Robert Cooper III. It's about time they were wed. You raise a good point, Lord Berwick. I have a daughter close in age to your eldest son, my lord. I'm sure she'd be honored to take your son's hand in marriage. But don't you have a lowly frosted kingdom baron is no fit back for a royal prince. I have five unmarried granddaughters. One of your boys could have their pick. Your granddaughters look like walruses and they smell even worse. At least they don't eat sheep heads and shark tails for dinner. If I was a girl, I'd be honored to marry you, son. You've met my daughter yourself, Lord Richard. Perhaps she and one of your boys would make a fine match. You're already my allies, my lords. I assume I can depend on your continued loyalty. Of course! Then we'll need to look elsewhere. Now, does anyone have any other suggestions? It's important to have allies both in and out of the kingdom. Lord Stonework has remained neutral so far, and he commands one of the largest armies in the Skylands. Perhaps we should get him to join the war on our side. Lord Sturmwork's quite the unreliable man. Do you really think we can convince him to join our cause? I'm sure marriage to a member of the Cooper bloodline would ensure his loyalty. But what of allies out of the kingdom? Any ideas? The Duchy of Borningunder has grown quite powerful in recent years. Indeed so. Some in the Bonnenkraut kingdom would say its duke is more powerful than the Bonnenkraut king himself. An alliance with the Bonnengunder royal family. That would certainly help our numbers. And if we ever wished to reclaim the Bowling Crown throne, we'd have the perfect ally. I'm not so sure about that. In the Hundred Years' War, the Bone and Gunder forces abandoned us the moment we started losing. Are you sure we can trust their loyalty? Marriage creates loyalty, my lord. I fought with Lord Lothar in my youth. He's a proud man, but I'm sure he'd accept the match if you were to marry him to your heir. You suggest I marry Robert, one of Lord Lothar's daughters? Is heir to all of Sherbetland, as well as the Casimir lands once your uncle passes away. There's no better match in the kingdom. I hold Karha City. Allow me to travel personally to Chucklehawk Garden to propose the marriage. You focus on getting Sturmwoke's support. If the Queen attacks, we'll need his men. Alright, we'll travel to Skyland later this week. First, I'll need to break the news to my children. 
beat you! Ha <laughs> ha looks like you did. No fear, you took a shortcut across Icicle Mountain. It's not my fault none of the rest of you spotted it. There's no honor in taking shortcuts. Then honors for losers. Better luck next time, boys. Rob, there you are. Where have you been all day? Racing around Sherbert Land? Why? Herbert's musty got spooked by a penguin. You'd be spooked too if you'd never seen one before. Father's returned to Sherbert Land. He wants to see us both. Oh. We should go. I'll see you later, Rob. Robert. Halbert. Your father has important news to share with you both. <laughs> this should be fun. You're 23 and 21 years old now. You're both of age and have proven yourselves capable warriors on the battlefield. However, wars aren't always won with blades. Sometimes they're won with golden rings. Must you always speak in cryptic riddles, father? The council and I have decided it's about time you were both married. We've selected brides for the both of you. You'll be wedded within the next month. Wait, what? As you wish, father. No. Father, I'm already betrothed to someone else. Someone else, you say? That's the first I'm hearing of this. He's talking about one of his mistresses. He tried to marry her in secret. You tried to marry yourself off, under my nose? You won't have you and mother telling me who I can and cannot marry. You will marry who you are told, as I did, as my father did, and as my grandfather did. Like the king and queen did? They can't even stand to be around each other! How can you be so opposed to this match? You've never even met the poor girl. Who even is it? She's a princess of the Bonangunda family. She's not even from around here! It's your duty to marry and continue our bloodline for the sake of the realm, for the family! If you wish to keep your mistress, that's perfectly fine by me, but you are to marry who you are told. Why should I have to marry someone I've never met for the sake of your political schemes? Your father is working hard to do what's best for the realm, and you're making a mess of things over a woman! Stay out of this, Lord Greyford! You'll show no disrespect to my lords and my castle, boy. We're in love! Isn't that what's important? Is it love, son, or is it simply lust? I've had enough of this! Rob, wait! <sighs> I'm sorry, son. Your brother refuses to learn the way of the realm. I know, father. I just hope he'll be alright. He'll be back. The easy way or the hard way, he'll learn the truth with time. I hope he learns the easy way. And then, as the sun began to set, Baron Koopa rode into the battle, bursting through the royalist forces and slaying one of King Herod's brothers! So Lemcelot faced off against King Herod himself in single combat! I'm skipping past all the violence. Until eventually, Sir Lemcelot struck a fatal blow with his magic sword that broke through the king's armor. The king collapsed, and the honorable knight helped his fallen foe to safety, resting him beneath a tree far from the battle. And thus, the usurper king, Herard Korai, succumbed to his wounds. Succumbed, my love. <sighs> I never tire of that story. My love, I've been thinking. Oh, I hate when you do that. I know that the council meetings have been causing you a lot of stress recently. I don't understand why nobody's getting along. I've ordered them to like six times. I know you have, my dear, but Lord Richard simply won't listen to you. Which is why I was thinking, perhaps we should move the court to your grandfather's ancestral seat, Kayan Crag. I don't know. That might make Lord Richard mad. So what? Lord Richard's a traitor to the realm. He approached me earlier today and tried to take our son away to Sherbertland. So? He'd probably do a decent job raising him. He killed Lord Sigmund! That man looked out for me the moment I first came to this wretched kingdom! Lord Richard is not someone to be trusted. Neither is Lord Berwick or any of his lords who bore steel against you. Lord Richard's my cousin and my friend! He attacked you with an army, killed your most loyal advisors, threw you in the Black Tower, and stacked the council with his own allies. I did hate being imprisoned in the tower for a month. You know what I've heard people whispering? That Lord Richard wishes to be king. What? But I'm the king! Oh, but that's not what I've heard. I passed a group of knights, and you know what they said? 
that you might sit on the throne, but Lord Richard rules the realm. Really think he wants my throne? His claim to the throne is stronger than anyone else left in the kingdom. He wants to kill you and take your throne, just as your Uncle Joseph did. No, he can't do that! Then we must move the council! The crag is where we have the most support! The people love you there and you'll be safe! <sighs> Alright, we'll move to Cayenne Crag. Thank you, my dear. It's okay. I'm gonna head to bed. I'm feeling tired. I'll join you once I've put the children to bed, if you'd like. Nah, I think I'm gonna sleep in my own chamber tonight. Do you not love me? I don't know. Kinda. KINDA?! Wait, no, I didn't mean it like that. Ugh, you are unbelievable! Cinder, wait! Ugh, you see what I gotta deal with? Were you alright, my love? You seem very quiet at dinner tonight. I'm fine. I'm just really tired of being judged every time I open my mouth to speak. Judged? Whatever do you mean? You've heard the way they talk about me. Your aunt and cousins think I'm a whore and your mother hates me. Don't take any notice of them. Mother's just disappointed I didn't marry someone that could give her more grandchildren. Are you not disappointed? Of course not, Jane. You're my wife. I love you. Would you not have preferred a wife that could give you sons? I don't need sons. My father has his heir, and his heir now has an heir of his own. All I need is you, and I've loved having you here. You have? Of course. I've never been close with any of my brothers. With you, I actually feel like I belong here. You're so sweet. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. You could bash your cousin Zachary and Cuthbert's heads together. <laughs> They've always been quite the jesters. Hello? Greetings, Sir Corrin. I bring news from the king. You were summoned to a council meeting at Cayenne Castle in the Craglands on Monday, June 31st. Apparently, his grace doesn't realize June only has 30 days. Cayenne Crag? What's the occasion? I'm not sure. I hope it's nothing serious. I see. Sounds like you guys had quite the argument. I felt terrible. I've never seen Rob that angry before. He really likes that mistress of his, huh? I just wish he'd understand the benefits a well-placed marriage would bring to our family. I've tried to get that into his head since he was a boy, and it's always fallen on deaf ears. Ears? You know what I mean. Forgive me, uncle. I don't mean to bother you with this. It's quite alright. Though perhaps letting your son marry for love wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Are you drunk again? I'm serious, my nephew. Robert is my son and heir. He's the future of our line. When I die, he'll be the next Duke of Sherbetland. His marriage is the most important to our house. I'm aware of how succession works, Richard. King Robert Cooper II married for love, turning his father's dynastic planning to ashes, and we all remember how things ended for him. Do you wish for him to be unhappy? I wish for him to have a loving marriage and to bear many children. With a lady we've picked out for him, like a mature adult. How can you be sure this born in Gundab girl will truly make him happy? We can't, but we need this alliance. Alliances are temporary, my nephew. What you are asking of your son is to spend the rest of his life with this woman. I understand that, but the Queen will be raising an army soon. I just know it. Your grandfather, Prince Wulfric, was also married for politics. King Robert Cooper III married him to a Cascade princess. I'm aware they were an ill-suited match. I've been told that near the end of their lives they couldn't stand to be around each other. Do you really want that for Warp? Of course not, no. But without that marriage, we may not have won the Cascade Kingdom's support in the war. I know you want what's best for Warp. Just maybe try looking at things from his perspective. I understand, Uncle. But Berwick's already traveling to Chucklehawk Garden. I do hope the match will be good. Perhaps you could allow them to meet before the wedding, to see if they're compatible. That's not a bad idea. Thank you, Uncle. Everything alright up here? Everything's fine, my great-nephew. Looking forward to meeting your future wife? Of course. From what little I know of her, I suppose. You should be. The Sturmvolks have been a very powerful house in the Skylands for generations, claiming descent from King Robert Cooper I. Lord Sturmwork has four daughters. You'll have your pick from any you wish. Lucky guy. 
I hope I'm to her father's liking, being the second son and all. Just make sure you've seen the all before you pick. Don't want to feel ripped off. <laughs> Uncle, don't be gross. I'm kidding. Have a sense of humor. I have no doubts you'll make an excellent husband, Hal. Thank you, great uncle. Now, I'm afraid we must depart. Don't want to be too late to Skyland. Good luck, boys. Just be careful traveling along the Choco Mountains. By bringing 500 men, I think we'll be fine. I meant to be careful you don't get too hungry. The rocks aren't edible. Trust me. Welcome, Lady Talissa. Lady Monona! How wonderful to see you again. As it is to see you, my lady. Welcome, your great aunt girls. Welcome, Lady Talisa. Yeah, welcome, Lady Talisa. Thank you, girls. You've both gotten so pretty since we last met. Thanks! I've been using this new acid to bleach my skin. Wait, what the hell? So, what's the occasion? I figured as our husbands are away, the two of us could spend some time together. I hope Lord Richard's been holding up well since the battle. Unfortunately, we had quite the argument with our eldest son yesterday. That's very unfortunate to hear. Yeah, screw you, you ungrateful bastard. Not me, moron, Rob! I thought that guy was Rob. Do you even remember any of us, Uncle Jefford? I'm convinced you were dropped as a baby or something. Would you like to come inside? We have some delicious chocolate cake you guys have got to try. Sweet, I'd love to. Not for you, for our guests. Screw that, show me the courtyard. When this battle starts, I'm gonna be prepared. It's around the back. You could practice with some of your cousins if you'd like. Sweet. Wanna come get a makeover? Sure. <laughs> you seem fun. Those two seem like they'll get along. Rickon, hey! It's been so long. Much too long. How have you been? How have you been? You were imprisoned in the Black Tower. Are you alright? I'm fine, don't worry. The King's men treated my brother and I with respect. They'd have been fools not to. That's a relief. I was really worried. I missed your company, though. Thanks. I missed you, too. So how are things here? It's been pretty lonely here, to be honest. I must admit, I've felt similar since getting back to Sherbetland. Yeah, everyone around here is just so dull. All anyone my age wants to do is get married and bear some gross old lord's children. All anyone my age wants to do is swing swords, violate women, and butcher animals. So, would you like to come look at the ancient tapestries with me? Now that does put a smile on my face. Ah, now this is much better. Most certainly, my queen. I agree. This castle is much warmer and a much more comfortable spot than the Great Koopa Castle. Much nicer wine, too. What do you think, Your Grace? I don't know, this throne isn't very comfortable. You complain about the Valley Throne being uncomfortable all the time. Your great-grandfather sat in that chair while he was Duke of Cayenne Crag, my king. And he probably got serious back pains all the time. We discussed something actually important, or did I waste my time coming here? You're welcome to leave if you wish, Lord Tybal. Not to be rude, but who the hell is that? Lord Traden Byrne? Earl of Pyre Park? Don't remember. We literally fought on the battlefield together. You guys really turned the tide there. What is the meaning of this move anyway? You're welcome to go home. No one here would miss you. You've less distance to travel. You should be happy you and your minuscule forces don't have to travel as far. I'm getting real sick and tired of getting no respect- I'm thirsty! Careful! Sorry, sir. So, shall we get started? Uh, I say we listen to the big guy. After you, my love. <clears throat> I, King John Koopa IV. Six, dear Grace. Sorry, the six would like to thank you all, my most trusted and loyal advisors, for fighting for me of Wob City. Though some of us here didn't even bother to commit their forces. The battle was lost. We had no other choice but to go home. Perhaps if you joined the battle sooner, we shouldn't have lost and my father would still be alive. Perhaps if your father were a better swordsman, he'd still be alive. You take that back before I take your head! Lord Blaine, calm yourself. 
You really need to start considering whose side you're on, Lord Ironside. I won't hesitate to imprison your entire family in the Red Tower! Red Tower? Kyan Crag's primary prison fortress. The cells are said to be so hot that the prisoners need twice as much water a day as the ones in the valley. You were saying, my love. I decree that Lord Richard Koopa of Sherbetland, Lord Berwick Python, Lord Gaston Thornton, and anyone who raised arms against the king in Wop City is a traitor to the realm. Excuse me? Uh-oh. I promise clemency to any knight or lord willing to come to the crag to answer for their crimes against the realm. Those who don't will have no other choice than to face the king's wrath. I'm sure Lord Richard's men will be trembling when they hear that message, Your Grace. Wonderful! The king is just! Your Grace, this isn't a good idea. Things are at peace. They're going to raise an army and attack. <laughs> you call this peace? Lord Richard's practically running the realm. He's filled the council with snakes. He did much the same when he was in charge of our lands in the Frosty Kingdom. I know you're all upset, but if we do this, so many more of us will die. I understand where you're coming from, Sir Roderick, but if we truly wish for peace, something needs to be done. I've already lost my son and heir. What have I left to lose? Lord Richard's attack was unlawful, and dare I say evil. He should be beheaded for what he did to the king and to the honorable Lord Sigmund. He's a rebel and a traitor. Everyone understands you don't bear arms against your king. If any of us attempted what he did, we'd be mutilated and boiled in lava. I wish to lay claim to Riverbank Castle! How is that relevant? It's not, but it's impossible to get a word in with all this damn talking! I'll have you know Lord Richard attempted to take away my son, Sir Roderick. I know Lord Richard. He wouldn't harm your son. He's a man of honor. Lord Richard shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the royal princess. And why is that, Lord Blaine? Do knock it off. Something special about Lord Richard to you, Sir Roderick. Yeah! You're talking about the man that killed my father! You've killed countless fathers and turnies. Don't act like you're pure. Roderick, please! You be careful what you say around me, boy! You can't threaten me. I don't fear you as everyone else here does, Lord Bane. You will when I knock out your eyeballs and rip your head from your body! Enough! That is my brother! <sighs> as you wish, Your Grace. <sighs> Forgive me, Your Grace. What is it we should do about Lord Richard? He must be executed, and his sons too, fought in the battle just as much as he did. Lord Berwick too, and his treacherous brothers and uncles. I wouldn't be opposed to that. And that freak Lord Thornton too. And we should marry their daughters to Blackfoot's sons. It's not like there's not enough of us. A son shouldn't have to pay for the crimes of his father. Tell that to all the sons Richard and his men massacred. Maybe so. Though the execution of their Koopa Prince would certainly spark outrage in Sherbert Land. Perhaps a more merciful punishment would be the right way to go, Your Grace. It's the only way we can ensure our children will be safe, my love. I'll be right back, Aurora. I'm here to see Joanna. What the? You're not Joanna. She's in her chambers, and she's not allowed to see you. What? Why? Your father is a traitor to the realm, and so are you. I'm not a traitor. My brothers were imprisoned. I was fighting to free them. Your father murdered Lord Sigmund on the battlefield and unlawfully imprisoned the king. I'm not having my daughter visit your castle to be your whore anymore. She was not my whore. We love each other. Oh, you do? So you don't have other mistresses then? Leave them out of this! Love or not, no daughter of mine is going to lay with a traitor. She'll be married to Killian Byrne in the next fortnight. Killian Byrne? You can't marry her to him. He's an asshole. I recall that from my time in the Frosted Kingdom. Asshole or not, he served the king loyally. You know how many Tybalt men fell when your father's army attacked? I'm not my father. Just let me see Joanna, or I'll see her myself. Threaten my mother again, and we'll kill you where you stand. You do not scare me, boy. You come alone, yes? I don't see how that's relevant, but maybe. You're lucky I don't have my knights imprison you and hand you over to the king and queen. Run home, boy. Get someone else's daughter to be your mistress. 
Impressive work, Toby. You've gotten quite good since we last trained. You need to start putting me against better men. If this were a real battle, I'd be cutting through you all like butter. We're doing the best we can, my nephew. Your best isn't good enough. The Orca seeks its prey. The Orca? I like it. Thanks, I came up with it the first time. You're doing great, Toby! Shut up, woman! I mean no disrespect, Lily, but I don't get what you see in my brother. I love him, but he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> I know, but hey, makes them easy to manipulate. What does manipulate mean? Don't worry about it. Someday, I will be his queen. I thought we already had a queen. <laughs> For now, at least. Wow, that sounds awful. I'm sorry to hear about your brother. It's fine. I just hope he'll be alright. Rob's always had my back growing up. I remember when you guys came to Aunt Yasmin's wedding. He asked me to dance with you because you were too shy to ask yourself. I recall that too. Uncle Jeff had got too drunk and started hitting on Lady Perch. <laughs> he had a headache for two weeks after that. My father calls him an embarrassment to the family. He makes us laugh. I suppose he can't be too awful. <laughs> yeah, soon my father will wish I'd be married myself. Would that be so bad? I suppose not, if it was with the right person, of course. Someone brave, handsome, and strong. I just had a thought. Would you like to perhaps leave the castle and go somewhere more fun? I excuse me? You said yourself you weren't having much fun here. Let's get out of here and go someplace more exciting. We can't just sneak out. Our mothers will be furious. Our mothers won't notice. Toby snuck out of the castle all the time during our stay at the valley. You sure we won't get caught? They won't even notice we're gone. Do you trust me? <laughs> Let's do it! <gasps> Hello there, my queen. What the? How the hell did you get in here? Let's just say I've got a keen eye for secret passages. The metal caverns near my castle are full of them. What is it you want, Lord Ironside? I recall your words at the council, your grace. I find it saddening that you distrust me. Maybe I wouldn't distrust you if you actually committed your forces to battle. I am sorry, your grace, but I stand by my word. The battle was lost, and I'd have been a fool to commit any troops. Do you actually have anything valuable to share with me? Why, as a matter of fact, I do. Lord Richard was spotted marching to Skyland with 500 men beneath his banner. Excuse me? They've also spotted Berwick traveling to Kahar City. Would you like some cake? No, I would not! How could you possibly know that? My friends across the kingdom, my queen. Lord Tusk has a wooden mammoth toy that he plays with, Sir Alon Rook is having an affair with Lady Clay, and Lord Goldwood hates his wife. I see. So tell me, Lord Ironside, what exactly is Lord Richard up to? They say he is looking to marry his son to the Bonningunder family, and that he hopes Lord Starmwork will provide him with troops. I knew it! Why didn't you say anything before? I only found out this evening, Your Grace. Oh. Well, in that case, thank you, Lord Ironside. You will be rewarded generously for sharing this information with me. The realm being at peace is a good enough reward for me, my queen. Though, perhaps there is something you could do for me. So long as it doesn't involve feeding the commoners, you name it! My brother has long desired a position in the valley. Perhaps he could be given command of the valley watchmen? Done! Thank you, my queen. They'll be most honored. You're welcome, Lord Ironside. Just remember to keep those secrets of yours to yourself. If you know me well, you know I punish my enemies very harshly. Of course, Your Grace. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and find my husband. We've much to discuss. You'll find him climbing the cliffs in the courtyard, Your Grace. <sighs> of course I will. <laughs> Lord Stormwalk? 
Well, Richard Koopa is here to see you. Richard Koopa? The Duke of Sherbetland? The hell does he want? Turn him away! He said he has an offer he'd like to present to you. Alright, let him in. Lord Richard, well I'll be a son of a harlot. Lavroy Stomach. Greetings. Must you have so many stairs? We believe many stairs keep you fit for battle. That's why the men of Skyland are strong and fierce, and the rest of you are either out of shape or dead. Charming to see you again too, my cousin. Don't give me that cousin crap. Our blood isn't even that closely connected. So what brings you to my castle? Well, as I'm sure you're aware, the kingdom has been at war with itself for the last few years. You've one of the largest armies of the realm, and you've yet to get involved on either side. That's right, why should I? You've never helped me when I was having trouble with the Cord family. Old Lord Richard's too honorable to raise arms against his son-in-law. I was told you were killing their sheep and peasants for fun. Ah, oh, there's nothing wrong with a bit of harmless slaughter every now and then. <sighs> we have our differences, my lord, that much is clear. However, I come with a proposition. I'm aware you've seven children of your own, Lord Sturmwook. That I do. Four daughters and three sons, each one tougher than the last. That I don't doubt. But, in exchange for your support in the war, I'd like to propose a marriage between one of your girls and my son, Hal. It's an honor to meet you, my lord. A marriage pact, huh? Of course. Your daughter would become Countess of Snowball Park upon my death, and your house will once again be closely tied to the Royal Koopa bloodline. A marriage to the Royal Koopa line could repair our house's tarnished honor. My father didn't exactly have the most positive reputation. I sympathize in that regard. Boy. Hell, is it? That's right, my lord. I'll give you my daughter's hand in marriage if you can answer this one question correctly. What weapon does a coward train with? Um, I don't know. The polearm? My daughter is yours. Really? Thank you, Lord Sturmwork. You won't regret this. The boy knows his weapons. You taught him well. Now, the question is which of your daughters shall my son wed? That is a good question. Girls! Ugh, could this not wait until the morning? Have they been waiting in the other room this whole time? These are my daughters. You may marry whichever you wish, boy. This is my eldest, Claudia. She could be quite the brat. F off. Adelaide is the prettiest. The other girls strive to be friends with her around here. Hey, handsome. Hey. If she wasn't my daughter, she'd be my mistress. That's not something you should say about your daughter, my lord. I don't pay you to speak, Sir Howard. Need I remind you your house would be nothing if not for me? Can we move on, please? Lunala doesn't talk much. She barely even comes out of her bedroom. Say hello, Lunala. Huh? Uh, introduce yourself to the Duke of Sherbetland. Hello. Alyssa's is also very pretty. Very enlightened, too. I like strawberries. So, which one of them is it going to be, son? I'd be honored to marry all of you. If you pick Claudia, you'll be sorry. She's been married before. Hey, shut up! It's not like you're pure. You've locked lips with all the knights here. That's not true, Daddy! She's lying! I think I'm gonna go with Lunala. What? what? Me? The hell do you want her for? Yeah, she's weird. I've had, like, three men duel over me. She seems kind. Then the matter is settled. Lunala, you are to marry Halbert Koopa of Sherbetland. Congratulations, Hal. Thank you, my lord. Right. Well, now that that's settled, we'd best be off. I fear we'll be going to battle relatively soon. I wouldn't travel home at this time of day. Storms are very common this time of night, and they tend to scare the musties. We've a guest chamber upstairs. You may stay overnight if you wish. In the morrow, I'll send some of my best men with you, under Sir Howard here. You're not coming yourself? I've got important matters to tend to up here. I'm hosting a tourney for my birthday next week. Thank you, Lord Sturmwork. Your hospitality will not go unnoticed. It's my pleasure, Lord Richard. I hope things go well for Lord Berwick, too. Lord Berwick's an expert of negotiation. I'm sure he'll do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. This is way more fun than just hanging out at the castle all day. Glad you're having a good time. It's nice to be away from all the politics for a change, isn't it? I've never actually ridden a musty before. <laughs> If not? No. Father's always made me and my sister ride in carriages with our mother. He claims riding is too dangerous for girls. I'm sure he only means to look out for you. 
He's always given Lily more attention than me. She's the heir. Knights and lords are always coming to the castle trying to win her over. She loves the attention. She certainly seems quite sly. When we were kids, she cut off all my hair in my sleep. Uncle Jory thought I was a boy. Well, it grew back quite nicely, I'd say. <laughs> Thanks. I know how you feel, though. I sometimes feel like the black sheep of my family, too. I've never been as strong as Rob, as kind as Hal, as fierce as Toby. The three of them have always been excellent swordsmen from the moment they began training. Myself, not so much. You couldn't have been that bad. It was humiliating. Everyone called me Rick on the wood chipper. Except for Rob. He always stood up for me. You guys were pretty close, huh? We were. I hope he's alright. He will be. Whatever's going on between him and his father, they'll work it out. I always work things out with my sister, as much as I hate her sometimes. Thanks, Rose. Talking with you really helped with my mind at ease about this whole thing. It's alright. I've missed you these last few months. I've missed you too. Hey! Uh-oh. Well, look at what we have here! I thought I smelled a python. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> May we help you? This inn belongs to House Blackfoot! Yeah! We don't allow snakes in our bar! Rickon, we should go. I seem to recall that Jolly Roger Bay belonged to House Python. They took it from us! You rebelled against the throne and lost it for yourselves. Your father rebelled against the throne and was rewarded for it! Yeah, what's our reward? What? Get out of our inn. Or we'll make sure all that's left of your little girlfriend here are her fingers. They'd make a fine necklace, I'd say. My father taught me it's not kind to threaten a lady. What does your family teach? How to die in battle? Rickon, look out! Keep hold of him, Blaine. I say we remove his eyelids so he can watch his little girlfriend die. Are you okay? We'd better get going, before any of them get up. Well, brothers, here we are. The future queen awaits. With all due respect, brother, he's no way of knowing he'd accept the match yet. He'd better! I didn't march all this way for nothing. Three of my men caught dysentery and died on the journey here! Relax, brothers, I know what I'm doing. I'll be back before you know it. Make it quick. We'll need to get back on time before we go to battle soon enough. Lord Barwick Python, 16th Earl of Skywood Stork, 5th Earl of Bristlewood Bay, 3rd Viscount Wind Waker, 8th Lord Montego, 7th Lord Tarantel, 2nd <gasps> Lord Python of Twinsy Tropics. That's quite the impressive list of titles. Welcome to Bone and Gunder, Lord Berwick. Thank you, Your Grace. This is quite the castle. I'm very impressed. Are those Chocola beads growing off the walls? Of course. The Counts and Dukes of Bone and Gunder have always earned their wealth through the wine trade. Plus, there's always plenty to eat. So, what brings you here today? I come on behalf of Lord Richard Cooper, Duke of Sherbet Land. There's been tension brewing in the Cooper Kingdom court recently. Really? I hadn't heard. I assumed all those people that died were probably fighting over spilled milk. This duchy has a history with the Cooper Kingdom. When John Cooper V overthrew Klaus the Mad, your father was right there by his side. I was about to rekindle that old alliance. And what's in it for me? I had a feeling you'd ask me that. I bring gifts from the Cooper Kingdom. Some gold fresh from the mines of Cooper Canyon, as well as some of our finest wine. And of course, your daughter would be married to Lord Richard's son and heir Robert, and become the future Duchess of Sherbet Land. So, what do you say? Well, it seems a lot of people are after my daughter nowadays. Excuse me? It's an interesting offer, Lord Berwick, but I'm afraid my daughter's already promised to someone else. Well, would you look who it is? Lord Blaine. Lord Berwick, fancy meeting you here. How did you get here so fast? The crag is much farther away than Carhar City. We traveled through the night while you slept in your castle. You snooze, you lose, Lord Berwick! You really thought you could form a foreign alliance from under our noses? You make a fine offer, my lord, but Lord Blaine simply offered more money, and your queen offered to relinquish the Gafarha ruins to me. 
I've always found those smiling runes to be funny. I'm sympathetic to your cause, but Lord Richard will have to find someone else to support his failed rebellion. I see. I'll see myself out and bring the news to Lord Richard. Don't leave just yet! I still haven't forgot what you've done to my father! Am I really supposed to feel threatened by a mere Marquess? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Calm yourself, brother! He'll get what's coming to him. They all will. So how? How's it feel to be a married man? We're not married yet, Sir Hakon. I hope she's excited as I am. You'll make a wonderful husband, Hal. Then, we've just got the matter of your brother to deal with. Yeah... It was kind of Lord Sturmwoke to allow us to stay the night, at least. Let's just hope he does the same when the battle is upon us. Uh, that might be sooner than you think. <gasps> oh no... Is... is that the king? In armor and on horseback? That seems oddly out of character for him, and what looks to be about 2,000 men. How many men did we leave Sturmwoke Castle with? 750, Hal. Uh, is that more or less than them? So what do we do? Should we turn back? Where to? The clouds? We shall not run away. The king is at the head of the army. I'll talk to him and see what he wants. Be careful, father. It could be a trap. The king is a good man. He would not do something so dishonorable. We'll negotiate man to man, cousin to cousin. Your grace. Lord Richard? Would you mind explaining what you're doing with those troops? I was merely traveling to Skyland to arrange a marriage for my son. Last I checked, that wasn't a crime. Oh really? Who's he getting married to? <clears throat> I mean, you and your men are to come with us to Cayenne Crag to answer for your charges of treason. Charges of treason? You heard the king. Forgotten about Womp City already, Lord Richard. You and your men unlawfully slaughtered thousands of loyalists that day, and you've yet to answer for your crimes! AND FOR THE DEATH OF MY FATHER! I did not wish to kill your father. It was within the heat of battle. I had no other choice. Perhaps when I cut off your head, I'll have no other choice! Your threats do not faze me, Lord Bane. Your grace, as I've always said, I only did what I did for the good of the realm. We are your faithful subjects. Is that so? Your pal Lord Berwick left for the Bonencrow Kingdom the other day. How did you find out about that? Word gets around fast, Lord Richard. Making foreign alliances under our noses now, are we? I only wish to find a wife for my heir. Without the king's permission, it is illegal to forge a marriage pact with a foreign nation without your king's consent. Luckily, my cousin Lothar is a man of honor. He told Lord Blaine of what you've been up to. Bloody snitch. It's clear to me Lord Richard believes himself to be above the law. I agree! Completely inappropriate behavior! Especially for a cousin of the king! With all due respect, I do not need your permission to find a wife for my son. I am the king's claw. You unlawfully murdered the last claw! If you think Lord Sigmund was doing a good job at running the realm, you must be as stupid as he is. Insult my queen again, and I'll kill you where you stand! Not while I'm here, you won't! Calm yourself, Sir Hakon! We do not wish to harm you, Lord Richard. We'll escort you to the crag. You may answer the charges there. I will not walk my men into their imprisonment, your grace. You really think your puny little forces stand our chance? I'd sooner die standing than live kneeling to a vicious, spiteful queen. Enough? Very well then. I'll take great pleasure in wiping you out. Sir Eric, when the battle is over, bring Lord Richard to me alive so I can kill this traitor myself! It's Lord Eric now! I said enough! I will not have this in my kingdom! My cousin, it is against the laws of the Koopa Kingdom to make an alliance without the king's consent! I promise you, your grace, all I did- You've done enough! It's my kingdom, not yours! I understand, your grace. Forgive me, please. I only meant to find a wife for my son. You're still my cousin, and my friend. I don't wish to execute you, but treason cannot go unpunished. That's why I, King John Koopa VI, sentence you, the Richard Koopa, Duke of Sherbetland, to ten years of exile! What?! You've gotta be kidding me. 